Hey there, soapy friend. Okay, so uh, this is Kevin with Divinely Designed. And a little while ago, I posted a video um, asking some of my subscribers for some ideas about um, you know videos you'd like to see or questions you'd like to have answered. Uh, and a couple people asked uh, for some videos about bath bombs. So I thought I would do do a video um, on that and do some experimenting. And um, so this one is for especially for Jen over at A&N Suds and Such. And um, if you haven't watched her videos, go check them out. She does a lot of great soap making videos. Um, okay, but this video is about bath bombs. So I'm gonna do a couple of experiments. And the first one we're gonna start off with is wetting agents. So when you put a bath bomb together, it is mostly dry ingredients. And the very basic portion of a bath bomb is sodium bicarbonate or baking soda plus citric acid. So that's what I have here. In this bowl, um, I have a mixture that I mixed up very well of sodium bicarbonate and uh, citric acid. And it is a ratio of two parts uh, sodium bicarbonate to one part citric acid. And really what I used was two tablespoons of baking soda and one tablespoon of citric acid, right? That is a pretty common ratio of two parts baking soda to one part citric acid or half the amount of citric acid as baking soda. That's a pretty common ratio if you go out there and you look at different recipes for bath bombs out there. Now I'm gonna do some testing further on about ratios, um, that exact composition, but we'll do that a little bit later. This first part is about wetting that dry mixture so that you can squeeze it together and actually have it hold its shape and stay firm and not fall apart. Well, this the reason that you get the fizzing um, in a bath bomb is because of the reaction between the citric acid and the sodium uh, bicarbonate when you introduce water to it, right? Now you can add lots of other stuff to the bath bombs and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. But for right now, I just wanna do some experimenting about the wetting agents of how we can actually get that stuff to hold together, get it moist so that we can pack it nice and firmly but that we don't activate that bubbling piece of it because we want that to stay intact and stay nice and dry when you throw it in the bath so it bubbles, right? Make sense? Okay. So we're gonna test a couple of different things about to, be, to use as wetting agents or things that you might put into your bath bombs that are liquid. Um, and so the first one I'm going to have here is uh, just water. So this is just tap water, so sort of our con control just to show you kind of what happens, or hopefully what happens. So, okay, there's a couple drops, right? You can see lots of bubbling. Right, okay. All right, so that's our control, and hopefully my control doesn't get uh, mixed into the other ones too much. Okay, next I have some vegetable glycerin. Um, this is a humectant, right? It draws moisture to the skin. You might consider adding this uh, to your bath bombs or a little bit of it. So let's see what happens when um, we add some vegetable glycerin here. Okay. So pretty good. I mean, I don't see any bubbling at all. Right, we can mix that up a little bit here. And I don't see any bubbling. And you would probably, you know, need to mix this in really well to your mixture. But it looks like it doesn't activate any of the bubbling reaction. And I'm just sort of mixing more in here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So you can even see 
kind of closer, it kind of just clumps up, right? Okay. All right, so that's glis vegetable glycerin. All right, let's try some other ones. So I have some rubbing alcohol. I have, this is a 71%, no, 70% rubbing alcohol. And let's add a few drops. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring it a little closer. So we're definitely getting some bubbling, right? Not nearly, not as much as the water did, but still getting some. Okay. Let's try a 91% alcohol. And you can get this, I got this at Rite Aid, uh, so these aren't special ingredients or anything. Okay, I don't really see any bubbling. with 91%. Let me add just a little bit more. I'm surprised I don't see any. I thought I might see a tiny bit. Okay, that's 91%. Um, right here. 91% rubbing alcohol, no reaction. Okay, you can still see in the middle the water is still bubbling. Okay, all right, so it looks like 91% doesn't really give us any reaction, which is interesting actually. Okay, another really popular one um, to wet is witch hazel. Uh, witch hazel is an astringent um, you can buy it, again, I bought this at Rite Aid, uh, so you can buy it over the counter. This happens to be an 86% witch hazel, and I don't know, I don't think you can buy any different percentages um, of witch hazel, although the next time I end up in a drugstore or a shopping center, I'll look to see if I can find different percentages. I think you can buy um, different um, formulations of witch hazel, online. I think you can find them mixed in different things. But anyway, this is one I just bought at Rite Aid, just over the counter, nothing fancy. Let me make a little space here to hold some witch hazel. And I'll add a few drops. Okay. Well, that's really interesting because I actually have read a lot of people who say they use witch hazel to wet their bath bombs and that is definitely giving me a reaction. An 86% witch hazel. Um, now let's see, if we look back here, this is the 91% the 91% alcohol, sorry I'm off camera, has, it has bubbled up a little bit. I mean, I could push it down a little there, but it seems to be bubbling just a tiny bit. Okay. The last one I have is um, liquid vitamin E, and this isn't normally, you know, um, a wedding agent or anything, but I just thought, you know, vitamin E is really good for your skin. It might be nice to add some of this to a bath bomb because um, you're kind of soaking in those things, you know, a nice hot tub full of um, some oils and other additives, which we'll get to, but uh, this does come as a liquid, so I thought I might just give this a little try just to see. And you can certainly try other things. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few drops there. And let's 
sort of mix that in there. Again, this is this sort of feels kind of like uh, the glycerin. It's kind of a paste. Well, I definitely don't see any bubbling yet with the vitamin E. It just sort of turns into a paste. Okay. All right, so that's interesting. Um, um, if I go back and kind of look at the glycerin now, so the glycerin was over here. Um, it does look like, again, there's a tiny bit of sort of fluffing up that's happening. Um, not nearly as a big of a reaction as the water or the witch hazel or the 70% alcohol, but it, the glycerin, it does look like it got a little bit fluffy. I don't know what else to call that. Um, and certainly our 91% alcohol Again, I'm, you're, there is some kind of reaction. I'm sorry, I'm off the thing here again. There is some kind of reaction that's going on. It's not, com, you know, not nearly as vigorous as the water, the 70% alcohol, or the witch hazel, but um, there is a little bit of bubbling going on. Okay. All right, so interesting. All right, so that's the first experiment in our uh, bath bomb series. Um, it looks like... Glycerin is probably a pretty good uh, wetting agent to bring some moisture, but obviously that forms more of a paste than anything. Um, if you're going to use an actual liquid, um, it looks like, uh, in terms of over-the-counter stuff, probably the 91% alcohol um, is your best bet in order to try and prevent that reaction from happening. Uh, and then, you know, there are some probably some other special agents out there, uh, like vitamin E in terms of liquid, uh, that would prevent or wouldn't, wouldn't create that bubbling either. And it's very funny because there's lots of, um, you know, recipes out there that call for witch hazel. Um, and I'm going to have to do a little research to see if you can find witch hazel or I can find witch hazel in a different, um, distillation or a different concentration or, um, oh, and this one does say, it's, it does, witch hazel is um, alcohol 14%. So, I'm, I bet you that this witch hazel is mixed in probably something like 70% alcohol, which we saw gave us a lot of bubbling. So, interesting. Okay. Um, certainly when you're adding oils and things, that, that will add as, uh, that will work as a wetting agent. That shouldn't um, activate the bubbling either, so when you add the oils, that will work. But All right, so this is the first part of our bath bomb experiments. Stick around for some more. Hello, soapy folks, we're back. Okay, so we're moving on to a new experiment for bath bombs. In this one, we're going to be looking at the ratio of sodium bicarbonate to citric acid. So... Um, in the first part of the video, you heard me mention that if you go out and you look at some recipes, a very common um, ratio is two parts of sodium bicarbonate to one part of citric acid. And that's what I have here in this mixture. You can see I have a couple of different bowls, and each one I wrote down a ratio of sodium bicarbonate to citric acid. So starting over here, this is the most sodium bicarbonate um, uh, ratio. And then as I go around to the least, to where I come over here, to where I actually have a, um, a ratio of one part sodium bicarbonate to two parts citric acid. So it is twice the amount of this one over here, right? As we go around the circle, the percentage of citric acid increases from least amount of citric acid percentage 
to the most amount of citric acid percentage. So here I have three parts sodium bicarbonate to one part citric acid, two parts sodium bicarbonate to one part citric acid, two parts sodium bicarbonate to one and a half parts citric acid, a one to one ratio, and here I have one part sodium bicarbonate to two parts citric acid, right? So least amount of, sodium, of citric acid, most amount of citric acid. In each of the bowls, I put 10 grams of the mixed powder. Uh, and to that, I'm going to add about three mLs of water. And this is just tap water that I have sitting here. And I'm gonna see, I wanna see sort of what the bubbling is, okay? So I just have a pipette and I'm gonna draw up three cc's of water and then just squirt it in. Okay, all right, so, well that's pretty interesting. I don't see a ton of difference in, I mean, they all seem to fizz up really very nicely. Um, it looks like this fizzing, I mean, I know I started over here, but this fizzing does seem a little lackluster. Um, this is still going decently well, but definitely over here we're seeing, I'm seeing kind of more energy behind the bubbling. It's interesting. Although this is going still okay. This one down here, which was three parts of sodium bicarbonate to one part citric acid, it's definitely fizzing out a little bit. Let's see if we add a little extra water, and I think this time I'll add the water starting on this side. Okay. So now they, they all have about six cc's of water. Uh, and I, you know, again, this is not a lab quality experiment. This is in the kitchen. But to me, this one is definitely fizzing out now. The bubbles seem very, very little. It's just sort of petering out. Even this one, which is a very common ratio I've seen in recipes, is not, is not doing super well. These three all seem to be doing very nicely. Now, you would, I, I'm, I'm guessing you would probably want to try and use the least amount of citric acid that you could. Um, but it looks to me like a super good ratio is this one, which was two parts of um, sodium bicarbonate to one and a half parts of uh, citric acid. That one seems to be bubbling very, very nicely. Lots of energy still in, left in it. This one, if I shake it around now, I'm getting a tiny bit of action left, but not a lot. It's definitely died down. This one, let me give it a shake. Sort of still definitely dying down also. Still has fizzing going, yeah. They're sort of reinvigorating a little bit. Give this one a shake here. I'm trying to, you know, keep it the same for all of them, so give them a little bit of a shake, all of them, and see what they do. 
So yeah, these, I mean, these two, after shaking a little bit, they sort of reinvigorated. They're coming back a tiny bit. But this one is definitely still my favorite, I think. I, it's coming back a lot. I'm getting a lot of more, more bubbles, more bigger bubbles still. These two are, are still coming back also after the shake. Interestingly, this one here, not as many bigger bubbles. They're staying pretty small. This one definitely has bigger bubbles after I shook them up a little bit. But the reaction actually seems not quite as vigorous as this one. Although this one now seems to be petering out just a little bit. Well, okay, so I think that was pretty interesting. Um, I've seen lots of different ratios out there. Um, to me, um, what, you know, having done my little kitchen experiment here, the ratio of sodium bicarbonate to citric acid that seems the best is this one, which is two parts of sodium bicarbonate to 1.5 parts of citric acid. So if you used two cups of um, sodium bicarbonate, you would use one and a half cups of citric acid to obtain that ratio. Okay, so that's um, bath bomb experiment number two. Stick around for some more. Okay, I'm back here. This is Kevin with Divinely Designed, and um, not really an experimental portion of this video, but uh, in the same vein of talking about bath bombs, once you have your mixture together and you have it moist so that it can um, stay together, you know, it doesn't crumble and fall apart, um, then you're going to want to mold it. So um, I, I got together some options for using as molding tools. Um, you can certainly use a mold, right? So this is a silicon mold, um, and you could take your mixture and just sort of squish it in, uh, press it nice and firmly so that you have the shape of whatever you're using. Now, um, having looked at some videos and read some blogs about bath bombs, um, you know, less complicated shapes are better. So like this is a nice big heart uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's pretty deep. Um, it's probably over an inch or maybe an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half deep um, mold that you could put in here, squish down. Um, it is silicone, so if you press really hard, the 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 con part of this is you might get some you know some bulging on the sides there, and your shape won't be quite as crisp as maybe you wanted it. But using silicone molds are, is perfectly acceptable, I think. Um, you can, and these work really well because you can sort of squish these all in here in your bath bombs and let them sit directly in the mold um, while they harden. And usually you want to wait, I think I've read, somewhere between 24 and 48 hours for them to harden. The, the resting time or the drying time varies a lot by how much liquid you've put into your mixture, uh, as well as probably, you know, where you live in terms of the humidity and what's going on with your local environment, uh, whether the water can evaporate quickly or if you have humidity. Um, if you have lots of humidity, if it's a really, like I live in Philadelphia, we get really hot, sticky summer days. Um, if I didn't have the air on, you know, it might be possible that that mixture absorbed some water from the environment and would activate that bubbling reaction. And then you would get your, your bath bombs that would be growing. Okay, so a uh, silicon molds, um, a, a, fir a good first one. You can also buy specific bath bomb molds. This is, this is one I got from Brambleberry, uh, just two halves of a sphere, right? So you pack um, your, your material in this half and then you pack half in this half and then you bring them together and you squish them and hold it together. Uh, what I have seen about using these is the they work really well, they make nice shapes. The difficult part comes in getting your mold out of them. And usually what I have seen people recommend is that you take a spoon or something and you tap, tap, tap nice and firmly on it until you can lift it off um, and have um, 
you know, the one side nice and smooth, and then turn it over and tap, 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 tap until you get it out. Now, the other bad thing about these is, unless you buy a bunch of these, you can kind of, you, you, you know, you only do one at a time and you have to take them out and then put them somewhere to rest. Now, I think, um, who did I see do a video? It might have been Spicy Pine Cone. Um, and she actually takes them out and puts them on um, a plate that's been filled with rice so that they don't roll around too much and they just sort of stay there. They keep their shape. Uh, but anyway, so I bought this from Brambleberry recently and I can't remember how much it cost. Um, it wasn't terribly expensive. Uh, but I'm going to give this a go when I make my first set of bath bombs. I'm going to try using this. Um, another one um, I've seen talked about, this is a, this is a meatballer. Um, so it's just a, a clamp, right, where you would normally make a big bowl of, of meatballs and then scoop it out and form your meatballs. Um, so I've seen this used. Now you can buy these in different sizes. This is obviously kind of a smaller I think this was actually, when I bought it though, it was called the large size, you know, large for meatballs. But I think you can get ones that are a little bit bigger than this also. Now these have uh, little holes in the top and the bottom. Um, so that, that will affect the shape, right? Uh, when you squeeze your bath bomb together, you're going to want to put your fingers over those and squeeze. But you probably still will get little round indentations on them which may or may not bother you. With this one, you're gonna, um, unless you're really good, most of them I've seen, when you put this together, you'll get like a ridge line around the middle where the two halves have come together. So it won't be like a perfectly smooth sphere. Um, and I'm sure that takes some practice, right? The better, the more you did it, the, then you put them together, having that little ridge in the middle you could probably minimize that. And if that didn't bug you and you don't really care aesthetically that you have this round sphere with a kind of ridge in the middle, you know, not a big deal for some people that might bother them. But the same thing here, you could get that ridge in the middle, plus because they have these holes, you can get these little holes on the ends of the shapes. But um, those little holes do make this um, coming apart a little bit easier because once you sort of squish it together, when you're pushing, um, when you're pulling this part these halves apart like this, um, you can actually put some pressure in the holes to actually, you know, move that portion out of the metal piece. Um, so I am going to give these a try when I make some. I'm going to make some smaller bath bombs uh, and I'm going to give these a try. Now this was pretty cheap too. I think I got this online at Amazon. Um, I want to say for maybe five dollars, somewhere around that range. It wasn't very expensive at all, okay? And then um, another one, same exact kind of concept, this is a snowball maker, and you can find them online at Amazon, um, but these make a nice big one, right? So same concept, they don't have the little um, hole in the side. Um, I, I'm excited to try and give these a try, because I, I hope they're gonna make a nice shape. Um, they are roughly, um, you know, the size of the, the metal uh, bath bomb that you get, that you can get at Brambleberry. I mean, look, that fits in there pretty nicely. It's almost the same size. Just probably, this is probably just a tiny bit smaller. Um, but these were also really cheap. I think I got this for $6 or maybe six fifty. I can't remember. It was definitely under $10 um, uh, on Amazon. Uh, if you're looking for a really cheap um, example, you might want to give um, a tennis ball a go. I saw somewhere, someone's not my idea at all, uh, but they actually just took, um, um, you know, an X-Acto knife or, or a scalpel or, or a sharp blade or whatever and cut the tennis ball in half. And then on the inside of the tennis ball, it's very smooth. It's rubbery. It's smooth. Um, I... I have tried, I did a little bit of pre-experimenting before I got all my supplies in, uh, and this is what I tried. I tried the tennis ball, but um, my mixture, I think, when I had tried that first batch was a little bit too oily. So the problem with using this is it's hard to, it's hard to get it out of um, one half of the mold, right? When you, this is, it is great though, I will tell you, for squishing together, because um, you know, the tennis ball has sort of a give to it. So it's nice that you can sort of squish it really firmly together. 
Um, and then if you sort of twist, um, you'll get the one half off, but then getting it out of the other half is a little bit difficult, I found. And the other um, con about this is, you know, it has a fuzzy exterior, so it, it gets kind of gross kind of quickly. And that's, and that's actually why I don't even have the other one. I meant to save it, and I... Um, it kind of got gross, so I just I tossed it out. I should have saved it though, so I should have I could have showed you guys what the inside looks like. So, but this is a super cheap uh, alternative because you probably have a tennis ball lying around somewhere, and if not, um, you can get them you know from the super or from like Walmart or tons of sports stores, and they come three to a container usually, and they're also under ten bucks. So, um, all right, so some options for um, making your bath bombs. And, um, and that's it. Okay, so more bath bomb uh, discussion and experimenting coming up. Stick around. Okay, guys. So here we are back talking about um, bath bombs. And so we've, we've looked at the ratios. Uh, we've done a little testing on wetting agents. We've talked about how we're going to shape them or mold them once they're actually once we actually have the mixture all together. Um, and so I would thought about, I thought about just talking about for a minute or two about this other stuff that you can add to your bath bombs, right? And there's a ton of other things that you could add. Um, so let's talk just a little bit about them. Um, I think certainly first what you could do is add um, different kinds of clays. So if you think about, you know, the idea of the bath bomb is I'm going to throw this thing in my bath. It's going to fizz up and it's going to make, you know, um, uh, maybe some pretty smells or pretty colors um, to look at and to smell. But also, hopefully, it's going to add something to the bath water, right, that's going to make whoever's using it feel really nice. And so maybe you want their skin to feel very soft. Um, or silky, or you're trying to add some agents that might help to detoxify the skin. Um, so I think about those kinds of things that you might add in different proportions to your bath bomb to add some um, add something to the experience of sort of soaking then once the bath bomb's been used. And I think one of the first things is clays. So here I have some kaolin clay, I have some French green clay, I have some rasool clay or some red clay. I think, you know, the clays in general um, will help to uh, absorb um, uh, bad things, uh, give you a little bit of a silky feel in the bath water and hopefully on your skin. Um, things to think about though. Uh, you know, French green clay is green and Rasool clay is red, so they are going to add some coloration to your bath bomb mixture. Uh, kaolin clay is it might be a great choice because it's white and it's going to keep it that white if that's what you're looking for. Um, or you don't want clays to sort of alter the colors that you're trying to achieve. Um, but, you know, you could also use your clays as the colorant themselves if you're trying to give a slight color to your bath bomb just to make it more aesthetically appealing. Clays might be an all-natural way to go. Uh, they're probably not going to add a lot of color to the water itself, uh, but they're not going to they're not going to stain the bathtub at all. Uh, the one thing that does happen with them, I've done some, like I mentioned, I did a little bit of experiment before I did this video. If you make one with some clay in it and you throw it in the bathtub, it feels good. Uh, but just remember when that user um, goes to empty their tub, they're probably going to end up with this clay residual in the bottom of their tub. Not a big deal. It washes out really easily. Um, but, you know, it is, it is something to consider about what happens to the tub kind of after the bath bomb's been used. Is it going to leave residuals? Are you going to have a ring around the tub? Are you going to have some color that's around the tub? Are you going to have some clay that's there? How easy is it to wash off? Because, you know, most likely your users, um, your, your customers, uh, might come back to you and say, hey, I really love that bath bomb, but, you know, it left my, my bathtub pink or whatever. That's probably not a great thing. Okay, so clays are a really good option. Um, I know cornstarch is a big one, um, but, and it probably does add a little bit of a silky feel. I, I don't know, I think of cornstarch as more of a, I don't know, kind of a filler. Uh, and there are certainly other starches out there that you could probably use. 
I actually don't even have any cornstarch right now, so I, I couldn't show you. But cornstarch is um, something that you could use to, as a volume sort of expander for your bath bombs. Probably not going to do a ton in the bath water itself in terms of good qualities, but certainly not going to hurt anything. Um, in, in place of cornstarch, what I think I'm going to end up using is some colloidal oatmeal, because I think oatmeal in a bath is um, a very classic way um, that people have tried to soothe their skin and get that silky quality, um, you know, sort of a, a luxurious bath experience. People have um, actually bathed in oatmeal. So I think I'm going to use some colloidal oatmeal. I think that's a really good choice um, for an additive. Um, I have some Epsom salt. Epsom salt's a very classic additive. Um, Epsom salt itself uh, has lots of magnesium in it, um, and uh, people have been using Epsom salt soaks for many, many years in order to soften their skin. Um, so this is a great, a great one. This is something I got um, over the counter, I think at uh, maybe Rite Aid or CVS, I can't remember. Uh, actually, I might have even just gotten this in the, um, um, the pharmacy section of my shopping, um, you know, in my grocery store. Uh, but anyway, so you can get this directly from your grocery store. You certainly can buy online sources. I just got a, a shipment in from Brambleberry of um, a big bag of Epsom salt that's a fine grade. If you buy it online, you can you have a lot more choices in terms of the, uh, the grain size that you're purchasing. Uh, and most likely you want a very fine grain. You can also, there's also lots of other mineral salts out there that you could certainly use that probably do the same things. Um, I have read that using the, the one you do not want to use um, um, is a dead sea salt. Uh, or wait, maybe I'm confusing that with a salt bar, right? I'm right, so um, yes, okay. So yeah, I think you can use dead sea um, salt in a bath bomb, but you know, you're not supposed to use them in salt scrubs, and I forget the reason why. If somebody is watching and they know, let me know. I'll have to go look that up. So salts are a good one. Certainly the oil choices that you are going to put into your bath bomb. Uh, you're not going to put a ton of oil in, but you're going to add some, right? And those things are going to get mixed into the warm bath water, hopefully end up on someone's skin, leaving them feel um, you know, silky, but not certainly not oily. Um, so most recipes that I have read that are out there suggest things that are, you know, very light oils. So here I have some Babassu oil. Um, sweet almond oil might be a good choice, or avocado oil um, I think would be really good. Any of the very um, light oils that are good for skin are probably a good choice. Um, Another one I think would make an excellent addition is something like a powdered milk. So here I have some powdered goat's milk. Um, I think this would make a really great addition to a bath bomb. Again, sort of going back to, you know, people having oatmeal baths. Um, they've done milk baths for many years and trying to get sort of soft, silky skin. So I think adding goat milk might be a really great option for um, a bath bomb. Um, then we have botanicals, right? So here I have some calendula petals. Um, I have chamomile powder, kelp powder. Um, and uh, this down here is something I just got in um, that I'd like to try. This is white willow bark powder. Um, you know, some I've seen bath bombs where they add the botanicals just sort of as a decorative element, like on the top. Maybe they add a dried rose. Um, or some, you know, some petals that are just smushed into the top. They're mostly decorative. Um, probably not going to add a ton of, um, you know, a ton into the bath water itself, but they are aesthetically very pleasing. The one thing about petals and things like that that I don't like in a bath bomb is they end up in your bath water, and then you have to try and fish them out unless you want them to go down the drain, and then they might clog your drain. So, you know, be careful about your botanicals. I think powders are a much better choice. Again, you know, they're easily washed out of the bathtub. Things like petals and um, seeds and nuts and all those kinds of things, I might steer clear of. Um, 
uh, along with the, oh, and uh, the white willow bark I'm interested in trying because white willow bark and black willow bark actually contain um, uh, salicylates, which is, you know, um, the active ingredient in aspirin. Um, so as a botanical additive, uh, it might actually work very nicely for somebody who has um, you know, skin problems or skin issues. Um, now, I am not making any medical claims at all. I, I'm just thinking that that might be helpful. I have never tried it. I, I think I might try that in one of my bath bombs. I might uh, just to see how it feels. But um, just as a word of caution also, because they do contain that, Anyone who has an, a an aspirin allergy should not use white willow bark powder or black willow bark powder, okay? Um, along with the botanicals, again, sort of like with the clays, you, you have things that might be natural colorants. So this is alkanet root powder. Um, I might not add this for any kind of skin benefit, but if I'm looking to make a colored na um, bath bomb without using any artificial colorants, I might choose a botanical powder that has a color to it. And you can certainly, there's lots of choices out there, but this is just one, this is alkanet root powder, which would give you a lovely purple red. Um, in terms of colors also, you know, um, certainly I think you can use ultramarines or oxides or micas. Be very, very sparingly in your use of those. Uh, again, you can end up with staining issues in the tub. You wanna stay away from liquid colorants unless they are specifically designed for bath bombs, and Brambleberry has a whole line of La Bomb colors, which are specifically designed for bath bombs. So uh, those are perfectly fine. Um, the the powders, you know, the the oxides, the the ultramarines, the micas uh, work most well when you are able to the get the the mixture and then sort of work it in with your hands. Um, and when we do a recipe, we'll. We'll do some coloring of those as well. Um, certainly fragrances, right? So uh, essential oils or um, fragrance oils, uh, up to you obviously, but I think part of the experience of using a bath bomb is, is the fragrance that comes out of it. So all of, the, all of you great people out there who mix fragrances and come up with them, you know, there's a ton of work that you can do in choices in terms of fragrances. Uh, and again, you don't have to. You could make a fragrance-free bath bomb that just had lovely additives to it that make your skin feel really wonderful and um, skip the fragrance part. Totally optional, right? Uh, and then finally, you know, you could do fun things. This is some sugar candy for things like toppers on uh, cupcakes and cakes and things like that. And I've seen plenty of people do bath bombs where they add some little tiny colored um, candies on top. Again, all, pretty much only for the um, aesthetic experience, uh, making it look fun and, and playful um, uh, as a marketing piece, right? Drawing them in about how wonderful they look. Probably not gonna add a lot to your experience. Uh, depending on the size, the shape, the composition of what they're made of, they could potentially end up in your bathtub and not really dissolving very, very well. So, uh, you know, your customer jumps in and or you jump in to have this wonderful bath and you end up sitting on lots of, you know, candy color leaves or something. So just think about that. Um, and again, then there's other things you can add that are, you know, up to you. But like this is one I mentioned before. This is liquid vitamin E. Vitamin E is excellent for your skin. Um, so I think, you know, maybe trying some of this out in a bath bomb uh, might be really, really nice. Um, probably not, you know, not a lot of it. Um, probably in small quantities. But again, something that when you throw it in a, a warm bath, it's going to be in the water, circulating around, landing on the, their skin, uh, just making that experience a really nice one. And you know, ultimately when you're making a bath bomb, right, you have to think about what the goal is of, um, of, of what you're making, right? So are you making a bath bomb that's just for the fizziness of it and has pretty colors, or one that smells great? Or do you want them to have this just fantastic experience when they bathe? And does that mean you're gonna add um, milks or powders or clays or things like that. Um, so think about the goal of what you're trying to create uh, when you're making your bath bomb. Okay, 
So I think that's it. There's tons of other choices out there that I, I, you could certainly put in there um, and, um, and add to the basic, you know, sodium bicarbonate citric acid. Uh, these are just some options uh, to think about. And um, uh, if you guys have uh, great things that you add to bath bombs, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Okay, thanks. All right, so stick around. I think the next part will be actually making um, uh, bath bombs. Okay, Sophie folks, here we are actually making the bath bomb after I've done a lot of talking. Um, so uh, let's go over the recipe uh, that I have here. Um, I've got two cups of uh, baking soda. I've got one and a half cups of citric acid. I have... Then I have a cup of other additives, or the ratio I'm going with is about half of the amount of baking soda I used. So I have a quarter cup each of Epsom salt, powdered goat's milk, colloidal oatmeal, and kaolin clay. Then I have, just as a little additive, uh, a teaspoon of white willow bark powder. That's that dark stuff over there in the corner. For my liquids, I have a total of five tablespoons of oil. And you can use whatever um, combination of oils you think is, you know, the magical formula. Uh, but again, I think I suggest the lighter oils. So in here, I have two tables, I'm sorry, yeah, two tablespoons of Babassu oil, two tablespoons of rice bran oil, and one tablespoon of sweet almond oil. Into my liquids, I also added a tablespoon of vegetable glycerin and a teaspoon of liquid vitamin E. The liquid vitamin E, again, totally optional. I'm just adding it again, sort of like my willow bark powder as sort of that extra quality, I hope, you know, that little something that brings something fantastic to it. Now, I also have some green mica from the conservatory. This is a uh, golden green. I'm gonna try and do some coloring. And then I have my bath uh, mold. I have my little meatballer. I have the actual official um, bath bomb mold from Brambleberry, and then I have um, my snowballer. So we're gonna we'll, we'll try and we'll try some of those. I have a feeling I want to make the meatball size ones, some smaller ones, but we'll see. Um, I also have some 91% uh, rubbing alcohol to spritz stuff down, and finally I have a fragrance. This fragrance is tobacco and bay leaf from Brambleberry, and holy cow, this smells so good. Um, I bought it sort of on a whim. Uh, I think the description pulled me in, and it is just fantastic. I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's a masculine smell, but not not super masculine. I mean, I think it could be unisex as well. It's, um, gosh, I don't even know. It's got a little bit of an herbal quality to it, but it's just got this lovely mellowness. It is not like... I was so worried it would smell like cigarettes or something like that, and it does not smell like that at all. It's sort of like, it's more of a green note, like a grassy kind of herbal quality to it, um, married with just sort of a, a masculine um, base that's just a little bit warm and a little bit... Um, smoky-ish, but bright. Gosh, it's so hard to describe. Anyway, if you have a chance, uh, give, it a, give it a test. So we're gonna add some of that. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm just gonna use a whisk to uh, whisk up my dry ingredients. I'm, I'm eventually gonna get in there with my hands, uh, which is why I'm wearing gloves, uh, just because the citric acid can be a little bit irritating. Um, And we have lots of lumps in here, so I'm gonna wanna get my hands in there to feel the lumps and make sure they get uh, broken up. But for right now, the whisk is a good way to 
make sure I'm combining everything, getting it nice and mixed together. I think that's probably fine. All right, so let me just get my hands in and start. The citric acid um, especially uh, gets clumpy and stuck together, but I have uh, the colloidal oatmeal has little lumps in it, I think. Um, and, you know, it doesn't, this doesn't have to be 100% smooth. You could run this through a sieve, too. Um, and actually, that's probably a pretty good idea. Um, uh, because there are a lot of lumps in here. I'm going to try and get them out. Okay, I'm going to continue to mix this just for a little bit, but since so you don't have to watch this sort of boring part, uh, I'm going to pause the video. Be right back. Okay, that probably took a minute or two. I did use a, a sifter and just poured it through. That helped to get the lumps out really quickly. So it's all nice and fine now. Uh, so I'm going to add uh, my liquids and let me get out a spatula. Um, I did heat up my liquids uh, just, to, just to sort of combine everything. I, I don't think that's necessary, but um, that's what I did. Okay. All right. Again, I'm probably going to Go back to using my hands, but we'll start off with the whisk. Okay. All right. I'm just going to get in there with my hands and kind of squish stuff together, make sure I'm getting it nice and incorporated. Okay, now this is the critical part, right? What we want is a mixture that will hold together, but we don't want it so wet, um, you know, that it will take forever to dry, or we don't want to use uh, wetting agents, right? Because it, in, remember in the beginning part of the video, even the 91% alcohol, uh, which seem to do the less, the least amount of activation of that bubbling response, still had a little. So if we can avoid using it, great. So what you want, and let's see if I get it. If I pick some up and I sort of squeeze it, um, it holds together. Now, this kind of crumbles apart. It holds together a little, but not a ton. So I think... I'm going to add a little bit of the 91% alcohol. Now, when if you're doing this and you're following this recipe, this is going to vary for you. Don't don't forget because it depends on your humidity and you know if if I used a really if I used a smaller, you know, tablespoon and maybe I you had a little bit more oil than I do, um it's going to vary. So Pay attention to your consistency. Okay. Um, I put my alcohol in a little spray bottle so I can kind of control it and put, you know, kind of the least amount in that I want, I need to, but still get lots of surface area coverage. And I think I'm going to do that one more time. Okay. 
Okay. I, I, I can feel this changing a little bit in terms of the consistency. So let's try again. Give it a little better hand here. Okay. I think that's a little better. It's holding together better. Um, it still crumbles apart if I put some pressure on it. But it's generally like if I squeeze, I can make pretty good clumps. All right, I think I might add just a little bit more alcohol here. And this is going to be the last few squirts, I think. Let me just mix that together. Now, obviously, I do have quite a bit of an alcohol smell right now. Um, I didn't really think about that because I want to add fragrance, and this alcohol smell is probably going to throw it off a little bit. Um, you can add as much fragrance or as little fragrance or no fragrance as you want. Um, again, I kind of think of these as, you know, luxurious things, so I kind of want it to smell good. I, I would like a fairly strongly scented bath bomb. So, all right, let me get my fragrance. And, I don't know, I think I'm going to add maybe three, oh, let's see, maybe two dropperfuls. We'll start off with that and see how that goes. And I, I think I'm going to add my mica too. And again, I don't have an exact amount. I'm just sort of guessing here. But that was about six cc's um, or six milliliters of fragrance. And, I don't know, maybe half a teaspoon of mica. I think the fragrance level is good. I think I want to add a little bit more mica, though. Okay. Now, I've seen people... Uh, videos use that those La Bomb, Brambleberry La Bomb colors. They, they work really well. I debated getting some, um, and you only really need to add a few drops to get a lot of color. Um, so, but I, I ended up not ordering any, and uh, just thought I would go with Micas. We'll see. This is this is nice. This is actually in the kind of a nice shade of green. It's turning. So since I'm doing a tobacco and bay fragrance, I thought I would go with green. And I'm just trying to make sure I get, there's still some sections I'm finding that don't have the color. You know, they're sort of hidden down here. I think you could probably use a, a mixer, too, if you wanted to. Um, a stand mixer, or even, like, electric beaters. I think you could probably use those, too. Okay. I think that's good. I'm very excited.
Let me give it a little smell here, though. All right, I think I might add just a little bit more fragrance. Okay, so that's a total of 12 cc's, 12 milliliters, or four little pipettes there. Uh, again, I'm kind of going, I like strongly scented stuff. So, you certainly can add fragrance levels to your liking. Okay, I think, I think we're good to go. I think it holds together real nice now. All right. So let's try, let's try the classic mold first. So I'm going to take half and sort of mound it up. You kind of want it more than you know, higher than the mold itself. Do the same with the other half. All right. Bring them together. I think I probably could have used more. Let me try again. I think I probably could have filled them even more when I squish them together. Okay. Yeah, that feels better. Okay. I think you want some resistance when you push these together because you want to, you're trying to squeeze them, you know, make a nice Firm bath. Okay. All right. So again, what I've heard is tapping. Helps. Okay. All right. There's a bath bomb, a nice big one. Um, you see how you get that little ridge line I was talking about. So... You know, if aesthetically that sort of bothers you, um, I'm a little bit OCD, so sometimes that does, but it's okay for my first one, I think. I'm just going to let that rest on a plate I have over here. Um, I'm going to try my little meatballer. And I'm, I'm actually squeezing the metal parts more so than the handle. Um, okay. So that worked nice. Um, having that little hole allowed me to sort of push the top part out. Um, again, we have that little ridge line, um, if you can see there. Not, you know, not a huge deal. And if it really bugs you, you could probably use your fingers to um, sort of sand it down. That seems to work pretty well at this stage. Um, you do get those little indentations at the top there, you know, from the mold. But otherwise, a nice little mini bath bomb. That's very nice. Okay, and let's try the snowballer. All right. <laughs> this one seems like it's fun to do. All right, so I'm just sort of loading them up. It's a little unwieldy, uh, kind of getting this in the bowl. Oh, yeah, that 
that's hard to do. All right, let me try again. Let me move everything over to the side here. And I'll just try to take a nice... Oh, that worked better. Okay. Ooh, I grabbed a lot, actually. I may need to take some out. All right, this one's a little harder to use. Um, to get the right amount. Uh, so let me try again. Let me see if I can do it. Okay. That seemed to work much better. You know, for the first time using it, I think there's probably a little bit of a learning curve. Um, trying to use this, but um, seems to work pretty well. Okay. Okay. Not bad. We st again, we still have that little ridge. But this is a little bit more rounder of a shape than the brambleberry mold. That's a good, that's a good size, fits nicely in your hand. Um, so it's a little bit smaller, but it's more round than the brambleberry one, which is sort of like oblong-y. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna finish making up some of these. And then um, check back, we'll let them rest, and then we'll see how they perform, all right? All right, everyone, so uh, here we are with the finished products. So I made four large um, bath bombs with that recipe and uh, seven small ones, uh, seven and a half. I have this one half left over, and they haven't rested or anything. I'm gonna let them rest, but I thought I would just try and see what they look like kind of fresh. Uh, so this is half of one of the little meatball ones, and um, we're just gonna drop it in, I think. Ooh, holy cow, that bubbled up a lot. Oh goodness, it's gonna bubble a lot. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> Um, that seemed to bubble more than I thought it would. Well, that's pretty good, though, huh? I, if you want a bath bomb, I mean, you mean, I mean, if you make a bath bomb, you want it to, to make lots of bubbles, so it certainly did that. Ooh, it smells good, too. When it uh, gets in the water there, it really releases the fragrance. That's very nice. Interesting, okay. Cool. Um, I think it's still in, oh, it's gone. It was only a tiny little one. And you can see that colored the, the water a little bit, but just a sort of light green color. And I can feel, you know, the little oils in there. It feels nice. Okay, great. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna let these sit and dry for 24 to 48 hours, and then we'll do the final test. Okay, check back, or stay tuned, I should say. Hey everyone, okay, so we're gonna do some testing of those bath bombs, and as a little extra bonus, I thought I would give you a little tour of my master bathroom. So, this is going into my master bath. There's the vanity. There's the bath bombs, um, and uh, they came out pretty nice. Um, it's not quite 24 hours. I will say, as I left them on the plate, you can see it flattened out just a tiny bit over there. Um, so if that's important to you, you may want to take precautions. Um, this is my little double vanity and the mirror and my funky light fixture, which I love. Um, my master bath has sort of a little Asian flair to it. Um, I did design this myself. This is the other looking at where we just came in, my unmade bed, but I have a little bench over there. And this is the one tiled wall. Um, 
I have that little alcove with some flowers in it. And sort of the coolest feature is if you come around this wall, there's my tripod so I can film, is my shower is kind of an open concept shower. So if I step in here, this is the whole shower. You can see the rain head showers there. And there's my little soapy uh, shelf. You can see all my <laughs> soaps in there. Um, this is my fate, my current um, obsession, which is Chocolate Decadence by um, Royalty Soaps. Uh, this is um, a Southern Girl Soapery um, salt bar, and I have a little sliver of her shaving soap there, also from Southern Girl. Uh, and I think back here is Celine of IamHandmade.com, her um, lemon verbena. Um, so I have a couple of people in there. I'll try to put links. And then, so here's the tub. This is called a Nuforu, which is a Japanese soaking tub. So it's not very long, obviously, but you can see it's kind of deep. So the idea is you take a shower, you get all clean, and then you just jump in the tub to soak. Um, and don't actually, you know, use soap or shampoo in the, the tub. You just sort of soak there. So um, it has this nice little cover which keeps it warm forever. Um, I've put hot water in here and let it sit for like two days and it'll stay nice and warm. Um, you know, you, you, you may have to um, uh, add some hot water to sort of warm it up a little bit, but um, that's it. And you can see my dead plant. Please excuse that. My plant died and it's winter here and I haven't um, I haven't replaced it yet, so, um, and then just to finish up, this is my, my view out my window, you can see the skyline of Philadelphia way back there, and then just to finish it out, this is, um, a WC closet over here, it's sort of separate, but, um, for the windows, because they, I know you're going to ask is, like you shower and you have all these open windows, you can see that sort of panel in the middle there. Um, these slide like that. And the other one slides, again, sort of a, an Asian theme to it. Um, so they slide over, but anyway, okay. So let me um, change the view a little bit and then uh, I'm gonna set this up and we'll do the testing. So here we go, I have a nice um, tub full of warm water, and here's the bath bomb, and uh, we're going to try it out. Woo. Now, I know some bath bombs will float, and um, uh, I think some of that may come from the cornstarch, actually. I don't, I don't really care that it doesn't float, I kind of like... Um, I don't know, I kind of like the amount of bubbling uh, you get when it's sort of sunk underneath there. That seems kind of cool to me. And the fragrance is just rolling off that. Um, it smells so good. Now, it is a little strong, so um, I might have cut, I might cut back on the fragrance the next time I try this. Um, and I've been reading some forums, <laughs> my cats are curious as what's going on in the bathtub. So, um, I know I used a ratio of one part, or I'm sorry, two parts sodium bicarb to one and a half parts of citric acid, and that gives a lot of fizz. Um, but this is finishing out, it looks like. Certainly doesn't last super long. So, you know, going back to the ratio of two parts sodium bicarbonate to one part citric acid might have the benefit of fizzing that lasts a little bit longer. Um, so if that's important to you. The micas um, that we use, the green, has tinted some of the foam and um, certainly a little bit of the water itself. Um, but not, not a lot. I mean, the water has a tiny little you know, green tinge to it. Um, it feels really nice. Doesn't feel overly slippery. 
but I definitely see, you know, when I drain this, I'm probably going to have uh, some green um, or f even foam rings around the side of the tub from this, uh, I would imagine. Uh, now, I've read the mica stuff usually rinses off pretty easily just with hot water. And, and for mine, I actually have a little um, wand, so it's really easy to... Yeah, that comes off really easy. So I'm sure I could probably uh, clean it off pretty easy, but again, you know, having a ring around the bathtub is an issue, just something to think about and point out to you. Um, so that's it. Um, testing bath bombs, lots of discussion about bath bombs. Uh, I would love to hear your comments. I've also, I'm also thinking of using those Wilton cake icing colorants um, for colors in the bath bomb. I hear they work really well, so I might try some of that a little bit later. But Okay, for those of you who are looking for a video on bath bombs, that is my um, compilation of elements. So I hope you liked it. If you do, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, comments, questions, leave them below. I love to get them and, and answer them if I can. And uh, thanks for watching and check back for more bath and beauty related videos from Divinely Design. Bye y'all.